So I just want to discuss essentially how to create a technical setup of charts, right? Um, so basically what happens is that you have a bunch of technical indicators. Uh, these are called studies and you can, you know, there's just a ton of them, right? Um, and a lot of them have different, different values and different purposes. Um, but essentially what they are, a lot of them are oscillators. Um, so you got to start by understanding what an oscillator is. Um, and there's two basic types of oscillators, right? There's a volume oscillator and a price oscillator, right? Um, so each one of these are kind of uh, derivatives uh, of this type of oscillator concept, right? So uh, basically once you understand, so like the math, the math for these, you know, you can you can look at the equation and all that, but you need to kind of understand a little bit about what a price oscillator is or what a volume oscillator is. So this right here is a is a volume oscillator. So if I were to add volume onto this chart, you can start to see now this spike in the volume was a spike here on the on the volume oscillator. This spike here was also a spike. Now you can see that this spike, the, the potential for this spike was higher because there was multiple positive, there was multiple positives here, whereas here there's both a positive and a negative. So this is considered less because it includes both positive and negative volumes, right? So basically as you work on these Understanding all these different technical indicators, so, so like we just discussed the chink in the money flow index, right? So this money flow, this is the money flow indicator for the price and the volume, right? Um, and then this is the stochastic momentum indicator, right? So you can see it looks a little bit weird, but once you start to understand the details of this, you can really gain a lot of value uh, from each of the technical indicators. So like for instance here, uh, you can see that at this point here, you can see right here that this red line, when the red line is above the white line, that includes a downtrend. So you don't even have to really look at the price chart up above. You can look at the technical indicator and see from here to here, was a downtrend, but it wasn't really perfect, right? So that downtrend actually ended probably around this point, right? So the interesting point about this technical indicator is that that's when it started, right? You have to kind of say somewhere in there is when it started, right? So it's it really is a debate. When you start to use these technical indicators, each technical indicator has its own purpose, right? So Statistic Momentum Index is primarily a price-based exponential moving average indicator, right? MACD is like a price oscillator, right? So I don't even include a price oscillator. So if I included a price oscillator, let me just add a price oscillator on here, right? So, so if you see this price oscillator, This price oscillator will essentially be the same thing as the MACD, right? Uh, which is this guy right here. So if you see this, this point in here is a down point in here, here, down point here, and down point here, high point here, high point here, and so on. So basically, you can use MACD. Once you understand MACD, you can say, well, volume oscillator, I just use that because I'm still learning how the cleaner volume oscillator works. And it's basically a volume oscillator, um, but I wanted to use a regular volume oscillator first right next to it just to see so I make sure that I understand how the technical indicator works. So right here, this is maybe too many technical indicators uh, for one chart, so I'm gonna take off the volume because I already have a volume oscillator. And I can even take off of this one Right, because I have a volume oscillator, which is the essentially the Klinger volume oscillator. So I'm gonna update my chart a little bit, bring this down a little bit, update my thing. So what I do is I include a bunch of views. Each one of these views have different technical indicators. So if I'm primarily interested in a MACD, 
I, I hope you're following me on this, but basically, so for instance, let's say, let's say you're trying to understand what's going on with the whole entire stock market, right? And you want to say that this is my normal view that I use during a trading session, right? So if I'm trading the stocks, you know, I can trade it based on these technical indicators alone. Uh, and I can kind of start to educate myself about when these downtrends and that's how I did so well today. Like when I traded, when I traded this downtrend, for instance, um, let me see if I can get my trade history to show up here. It won't show up right now for some reason. There's some kind of bug uh, with the trading platform. But essentially when I traded this downtrend here, I knew to be confident in the downtrend because of the technical indicators, right? So if you look at the MACD here, you see this downtrend? This downtrend starts at 10.20 a.m. Yeah, it didn't even cross one time. So it crossed, it didn't cross yet on the on the technical indicator. I wasn't confident on it yet. So you could kind of say that this downtrend here was significant, was most significant by this point, right? You you kind of say here, I think I got in right at the crossing. So you it was can, most significant when the DAX broke through three thousand two hundred, but I so, would have gotten out. And 3,300 points. It's hard to say where you can get. So the entry and exit, do you see? So do you notice this point here? Notice the white line here and the red line? You can almost guarantee a crossing at this point, right? At, at, at 1020, we knew there was going to be a crossing. So what's the volume look like at that time? So that's a different indicator, right? So I'd have to use the Klinger volume oscillator for that, right? So at that time, we already know, first of all, if the price is going down, the volume is going to be negative, right? So here's another example. This is an example of where you can be wrong using an oscillator, right? But you have to use multiple theories. So basically when this oscillator is down here, the white, it, it works a little bit different. It works the same way, uh, but a little bit different. Right, so basically, basically, what you got to do on this oscillator is that if you see that the red line is up above, then it's probably a negative trend in the volume, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean price, right? So it's a little bit trickier, but we do know that most of the volume was negative throughout the day. And that's why this volume, so to answer your question, was the volume positive or negative? It, of course, is going to be negative, but it was actually negative and it was also increasing towards positive. Do you see, do you see that here? Do you see this white line? Yeah, yeah. So the white line and the red line both are going up. So it's negative because it's below the zero, right? Um, and so it looks like there's a pretty so you can't pretty, really trade it off here and 10 right uh, excuse me what was your question so the, the volume is pretty extremely negative like at the very start of the uh, 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 of the day right or yeah so this was a heavy so first of all before the day started at 9 30 You know, it, it was really, this was, this was due to the Fed report. So basically the Fed had a report released at around 10 o'clock, right? The, the guy started speaking at 10 o'clock. And immediately at that time, the, 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 the volume hit record levels of negativity down in here, right? So basically there was positive, there was quite a lot of positive volume going into the market, right? Going into the day. So, yeah, so when I started trading this, when I started trading this, I traded both the positive and negative side of this. At 4,200 here, the bulls, when they're moving into support this 4,200 line before the Fed talk, they were they had a lot of positive um, support there at 4,200. So there was a lot of support before the before the discussion. So let's look at a different oscillator so you can see what was going on, right? So here in this in this oscillator this is price and volume right so remember we just talked about this this chink in money flow right so the so way I think 
<laughs> like when the Fed talks, I mean that thing just goes and it just just goes all the way down. Right. It doesn't so, get lower than that the whole time the sell offs happen. So we so, know that right here, even though the price went up, it was still on low volume. It was on fairly low volume because the because this money flow, look at how you see this here, the price went up, but there was not much agreement on that price going up. So what you can do is that I knew that this was going to be a down day. Basically, you could also use this money flow to tell you this, right? Because do you see the point that we're trying to make here? So basically, the, the money flow was really far down negative, and yet the money flow only went up a tiny bit, and yet the price went way up, right? That's because there was so little volume on this going up. And by that time, the price was starting to go down again. Once it hit this peak, yeah, yeah. the price started to go down again. So the money flow was saying that only a I'm few – there was only a little bit of money flow back into the market. So very few I'm people capitalized here, on this game. Like, I'm looking on this chart, and it looks like the, it started the day out at 4,200. And then when it sold the first time, when the Fed started talking, it went down to 4,160 and bounced. So if I would have seen that bounce at 4,160 – I knew yesterday, I told you that the bulls had put a, the position already in at 4160. So I'm just I'm just trying to see the kind of. And so just, what really what you got to do is you got to start using. So, it, so even really, it doesn't go any higher than than 200 points. So, well, so uh, it looks to me like what it looks like to me is that um, it's just a. It, it, it's kind of like um, I, I don't really know what to think about this because this is a really interesting phenomenon how how it doesn't go down at all to start the day and then all of a sudden it just wrecks three so, percent. So let's so, let's look at let's look at more of a macro. Let's look at the more of the backdrop. The look. bulls here had had already. This was their position. They were in control here. This was the bull position, and. It didn't alternate at all, and it's hard to say because what did they do here? What did the bulls do here? Did they sell? I'm so here's here's what you can do. So one of the most powerful indicators that you got to know about in the market is so just just I'm going to tell you about the what the bulls are doing here in a second, and and how to talk about the bulls versus the bears, okay? But you really gotta know this indicator, right? So this is called the MACD. Have you heard of this before, MACD? I was using that one last night. I okay. was looking at so it last night. This is one that you definitely need to use. It's 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 a price oscillator, okay? But it's called the also, Bitcoin one. So, so yeah, basically what, what you can see First here, so hold on, just, uh, so what you can see here is that this price oscillator Essentially, if you would have used crypto one last night, you would have easily seen that it was uh, going to sell. Well, right now, what we can sell, see is that this price is extremely high right now, right? The price in the market is actually higher than the peak back in here, right? So we know that the bulls have fully taken control already based on this oscillator because the down was so low here, right? Okay. So, yeah. So you see this downtrend that we had. Right, comparison to win. So let's look at this. So, so you can compare June, it. You can compare this back to any time. This is the, the highest. Top is right there. And so the last top was back in June. Uh, so the last top spike was in June. So, so you can see the here. last spike was after coronavirus. So the, basically the, the highest that, the, that we were was when we – this is COVID drop, right? So this spike here – you see the spike here? It's almost equivalent uh, to that spike there. So the feeling in the market. June of 2020. Right? Right. So that's so June. That's, June that's, of that. Can we do something? Can we look at the Apple money flow in June 2020? So you can look at It's probably going to be about the same. So I'll look at Apple here. So I'm going to load up Apple. Now you can see on a daily chart. We go back to the to COVID land. I want to see the money flow in June twenty four. So talk Apple, about, just talk about Apple, Apple is a different scenario. This feeling for Apple 
we're so much higher than what we were. See, Apple had three points. So Apple has this point here, which was extremely high. So go back, go back. When does that start? So there's a dip here, go back. The dip before that high rise, when is that? Go back. The, there's a dip. Yeah, that go dip back. is in July. That's in July. So something that, go back, go back. Go back to June. So June is like it, right it's around been here. It's going to build a money flow on Apple here from we're saying May, and there's some sort of dip there where the money flow spikes intermediately into some sort of so radical spike. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You want to be out. very careful. You want to be very mm -hmm. careful when you study these things to look at the big picture first, right? And that's why, like, so if we look at – if we look at the spy and we add apple to this so we if we add apple to this then we can start to see well, this where the spike was relative to the spy 